All right, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I want to showcase one of my favorite labs that I do with my students, and that's like a temperature calibration. And before we get into the, the meat of that, I always review the three main types of temperature sensors and then pick one of them and do the experiment with. And today what we're going to do is we're going to look at a thermistor and dive deep into that. But let's first talk about what the three main types of temperature sensors are. All right, so the first one <clears throat> is an RTD, okay, which is a resistance temperature detector. And basically it's a linear relationship with resistance so as the temperature increases the resistance will increase so these solid lines right here they show you a linear relationship with temperature all right so temperature increases resistance will increase okay so that's an rtd this is a thermistor and it again changes with the resistance and temperature but it's in an exponential fashion. So as the temperature increases, the resistance will actually decrease in an exponential fashion, okay? So that equation is right here. R equals R naught, exponential or E, beta one over T minus one over T naught. Beta is the coefficient, and each temperature sensor that's a thermistor will have a different beta coefficient. And I'll show you that here in a second. And these, again, are a exponential. As temperature increases, the resistance will decrease in an exponential fashion. Now, the last one, let me do the browser, is a thermocouple. Now, thermocouples basically have two different types of wires. So one of these leads is one wire that runs to here, and the other one is a different wire, a different type of metal. And then they connect down here, and as the temperature changes, the voltage across this will change. Very cool. And they're different types, and one of the types that we use in our classes is the type K thermocouple. And let me zoom in right here so you can see this better. And uh, in the chart or in this table, you have millivolts. And so say you have negative 6.404 across those two different metals, then the temperature would be negative 250. All right. But say you had negative 6.425, then it would be this. It would be negative 255. All right, so they again, they, they all this will cover the different temperatures. Now again, with a the thermocouple, they're millivolts, so you actually need an amplifier to get that into a readable voltage into the computer, or say you're using a multimeter that doesn't have that amplifier. All right, so again, you got to use an amplifier. So just in summary of the three main types, RTDs, thermistor, thermocouples. RTD and thermistors, temperature changes with resistance. One's linear, one's exponential. And then the thermocouple, two different metals, you get a change in voltage between the two. Awesome. Now, let's look at, in more detail, the thermistor. This is distributed by Jamco Electronics and this is the data sheet. So what is a data sheet? The data sheet gives you information that you need in order to operate this sensor. Okay, So the resistance. Now if you go back to that equation, so let's go back. <clears throat> so here's the equation that we use. R0 and T0, those values are given on this data sheet. 
So R0 is 10K and T0 is 25 degrees C. You see that? It gives you a tolerance plus or minus on these values. Here's your beta constant or coefficient. So 4038 gives you an uncertainty. Operating temperature ranges from negative 55 to 150. And um, anything else that you need gives you the sizes. And then the um, information down here is a table that shows you temperature versus resistance. So you could plot this and look at the graph. And that's what I did. So let me show you. So over here, so I only looked at the temperatures that we're going to look at because we're going to put this in a pot of water and boil and get it almost to boiling and uh, look at the values. So these right here are taken right from that chart from 0 to 100. So the blue dots is the data sheet table. So it's exponential in relationship. Okay. <clears throat> now, I also am showing you on here, if I go back to the book, I am going to use this equation, which is 8.12, and plot that on top of that line. So you have data sheet table, table, sorry, you have data sheet data or information. You also have this linear or exponential relationship, not linear. Okay. So that's what I did here. Okay. <clears throat> I actually plugged that equation in and solved for R with these temperatures. And they have to be in Kelvin. So you just add 273. All right. So the orange is that equation 8.12. Again, it should line right up. All right. So you could take, you don't even need these because the data sheet gave you these. So if you plotted these like I did over here, which are the blue, all right, you could fit that to an equation, which I did logarithmic because that gave me the best solution here. I couldn't do exponential because I had a zero in here, all right, which is, it's okay. Logarithmic is pretty close. So I fit those blue points to an equation, and now I can have an equation for any R values. Again, just in summary for this, data sheet information. This is just using that equation that I showed you in the book. And I just plotted them both on one graph. And then I f basically fit a line or an equation of the data sheet information. Got this. So now I can have an equation that I could use for any type of resistances. Okay, Because when you do your experiment, you're not going to go from 0 to 10. You're going to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees C. There are going to be numbers in between, and you're going to have R values. So you've got to find some sort of an equation that you can use that you will convert those into what you need. All right, so in summary, let's go back to the front cam. We are looking at a thermistor, and we ha it has a data sheet. That data sheet provides you information. It also sometimes will provide you with resistance versus temperature. So you can then plot those, fit a line, and figure out an equation that you can use for any resistance values that you calculate, which will convert into any temperature, because you now have an equation. All right, so how do we, <clears throat> how do we hook this up into a circuit, and what type of uh, equations do we need from that circuit? Well, let's take a look. All right. <clears throat> so, this is how you're going to hook up the... Oh, I'll pull this off for a second. The thermistor up into a circuit. So we can, we can get some measurements. All right. 
So what you need to do is you got to hook it up into a what they call a voltage divider. So this yellow line is just positive 5 volts and this is ground. And it's hooked to a resistor, a fixed resistor right here. All right? This is actually 10k. Then this is the thermistor. We're going to plug that into the top of the 5 volts and it's going to connect to that resistor. Okay. So now we have 5 volts running through, goes through this resistor, it now touches this fixed resistor, runs through the fixed resistor, and goes back to ground. We have a DC circuit, and the voltage is now divided between these two resistors. This one's fixed, but this one changes, right, due to temperature. So if this is 10K at 25C, which is normal, okay, and this is 10K, and say we're at 25 and this is 5 volts, if we measured the voltage across this and that, okay, this would be 2.5 volts and that would be 2.5 volts. All right. Now say the temperature changes, this resistance changes, this will change the current going through here <clears throat> because this resistance changes will then change the voltage across this and that but the total voltage will always be this plus this equals 5 volts okay so say this is 3 volts this would have to be 2 volts if that's 4 volts that would have to be one volt. All right. So we can do the calculations and I'm going to show you the equation to figure out what the resistance of this would be at any given time. And we can then plug that into that equation that we calculated from the Excel sheet. Okay. So say I go back to this equation right here, we plug in this resistance that we calculated and boom, it'll spit out the temperature of the room. Pretty cool. Now, here, uh, the one thing we need to do is we need to jump from here to A0, which is our input, analog input to the Arduino. Okay, so this is right in the center. And this is actually measuring from here, which is like the positive end, to ground. So we're measuring across this resistor here. That's what this hookup would be right here. Okay? Because ground is down here. We're measuring from this positive end to the ground. So we're going to measure the voltage across this fixed resistor. And we're going to store it. We're going to look at the voltage every time through this Arduino. Now, if you had a multimeter, you could just put the leads on and measure what the voltage was, and then you could use that equation and figure out the temperature. But we're going to use Arduino, we're going to plug in calculations, and it'll spit out what the temperature is. Now, I use a program called Fritzing. <clears throat> it's like $8, but it's awesome, one-time fee, but you could you can draw up your circuit diagram. I absolutely love it. So you can plug in an Arduino, you can hook up wires, so positive, ground, here's your fixed resistor, 10K, here's your thermistor, and then here is your analog A0. So it's a much cleaner, easier way to look at a circuit diagram. Highly recommend you purchasing and using this in your tools for engineering. Fritzing. Awesome. There's, there's other programs, but I like Fritzing a lot. So what I'm going to do... Alright, so what I'm going to do next is just show you the math behind the circuit, and then I'll show you the Arduino code, and then I'll show you the experiment, and then the post-processing of the data. Okay, so let me go ahead and move this to the side. 
let's look at how we calculate and how do we find that resistance. So here is the schematic. So here is, we'll call VT, which is five volts. This is your temperature sensor resistance. Here's your fixed resistor. And we have current going through here. So VT is going to be five volts. The fixed resistor, we're going to use 10K ohms. And we can use Ohm's law, which states that VT is IRT. So V equals IR. I'm going to move that up. And uh, I'm going to solve for the current, which is VT over RT. And VT in a series circuit, because these are in series, not in parallel. These are in series. They add up. Okay. So now we know the current going through the series circuit. And we're going to measure across, we'll call this VF, the voltage across that fixed resistor. Okay, so we can use Ohm's law again, which states that VF is I times RF, the individual resistor. Okay, I'll just move up a little. So VF equals VT over RT plus RF times RF. <clears throat> so I plugged in what I was from above. And then that just goes there. And now I'm going to rearrange this equation for RT. So how do you do that? Well, you multiply the denominator on the left equals VTRF. And then I'm going to distribute these. So VF equals, oops, sorry, VF times RT plus VF times RF equals VTRF. And then just solve for RT. So RT equals VT minus RF. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me let me uh, let me fix that. RT equals VT times RF minus VF times RF all over VF. So what I did was I know this is what I'm looking for right here. So I took this, which is here. I subtracted this, so I brought it over this other side. Then I divided by that term. Now what I can do this up, is just divide by VF. So VT over VF times RF minus RF. And then one more time, I can take RF out. So it's VT over VF minus 1. Let me rewrite that. So RF VT over VF minus 1. This right here, RF we know. This is 10K ohms. VT, which is 5 volts. RF, that is what we're measuring into the Arduino. We'll know this at all temps, right? Because as the temperature changes, VF will change. And that changes, that will change the resistance in the temperature sensor. And then we can go back and use the equation that we fit to the data sheet numbers, and we can calculate the temperature. Okay? So we'll basically use data sheet to find 
the temperature from RT, right? Let me just move this back a little. Maybe this, there you go. So we can use the data sheet to find the temperature because we know the resistance. Because if we go back to the data sheet, which is right here, say we are at, uh, let's do 10 degrees C, RT will spit out 20, 24, zero. So 20,240 ohms. And if we're at 15 degrees C, then we'll be between these two resistance values. Okay, so maybe what's that for, maybe 16,000 roughly. So let me just recap what I did here. You have to kind of know some fundamentals. You got to know that this is a series circuit. It's a voltage divider. And we have a changeable or a variable resistor and a fixed resistor. We're measuring the voltage across this. And we're finding the equation that we can then find what the resistance of the temperature sensor is, because then we can go back and use the data sheet to figure out the temperature. All right, cool. So now we know, we know, let's just, let's just recap. We know the three main types of temperature sensors. We took a dive, deep dive of a thermistor. We looked at the data sheet. We, we, we plotted the data sheet values of resistance and temperature. We fit or fitted a line so we can then find temperature at all of the resistances. We then hooked that up into a voltage divider system so we can record the, the data that we need. We analyze the circuit to figure out the equation that we're going to plug into our Arduino code to calculate the resistance, which now we can then convert that to temperature. Okay, so now let's look at the code that we're going to use. So if I go to Arduino, and let's go to the browser. Let's go to this. Boom. <clears throat> Let me zoom in some more. So again, again, you got to know a little bit of Arduino. So I would highly recommend you doing my tutorials on Arduino before um, the tutorials before temperature sensors to know what we're doing here. Here's the Arduino code. And <clears throat> I have established one, two, three, four, five integers. So here's our fixed resistor. Here's our power supply voltage. Here is R0 and T0 from the data sheet. So 10K, 25C, or 298 Kelvin and beta integers. In our void setup loop, I'm just beginning the serial command. So 9600 is our communication rate. Down here in our void loop, uh, I have multiple lines. First line is I'm going to read the sensor value from analog A0 right here. I'm going to convert that to a voltage because in Arduino data, you go, it actually reads from 0 to 1023, and you can convert that to 0 to 5 volts to a voltage. So this is this conversion. So we're creating a float VF, which is the sensor value times 5 divided by 1023. All right. <clears throat> Again, A0 reads numbers from 0 to 1023, but we want voltages. So we just have to do this conversion here, which is 5 divided by 1023. Then I'm printing that voltage right here to the command window. I'm adding a tab. I'm creating a RT float, which I just showed you this equation to find the resistance of the temperature sensor as a function of VF. Okay, I'm printing that resistance to the command window. 
And then what I'm doing is a couple things. I'm creating a, I'm using that equation 8.12 in the book right here based on my RT value to figure out the temperature of that temperature sensor. I'm spitting that out, adding a tab. I'm then converting that to a Fahrenheit voltage. I'm spitting that out. And then here is the fit or that fitted line equation that I used. Okay, so if I go back to here, this is this equation right here. I put that right into here to figure out what the temperature is. I spit this to the command window and then I convert that to Fahrenheit. And then I'm waiting for the code to delay for one second. So we got an Arduino Uno, we're in COM12. Let's just verify to make sure the code works. Okay, done compiling. Let's upload it. And while that's uploading, again, I'll show you what this is doing. So I've just hooked the USB cable up. I've got the fixed resistor, the thermistor, just like I had running into A0. Go back to Arduino. Done uploading. Let's click the serial monitor. And this is what we have. So voltage from across the fixed resistor. This is the resistance of the temperature sensor. This is the temperature from 8.12 equation in Celsius. This is in Fahrenheit. And this is the fitted Celsius and fitted Fahrenheit. And again, they're going to be slightly off because the fit in line's not exact, uh, but they're pretty close. So 70, it's about 77 degrees in here, 76. If I have my thermometer, go back over here. So I have a thermometer and it's saying it's about 70, what, two in here, roughly, almost. So <clears throat> they're not perfect. And that's a good transition into why you must calibrate your temperature sensor based on a known temperature like reading. So I would, if I had my choice, I would say that this thermometer is more accurate than the temperature sensor. So what you're going to see next is me calibrating this thermistor with this thermometer because this is a valid instrument that we want to correlate and calibrate to. So even though this says 76 or say, say, say it was 77 and this is saying uh, it's a little warmer over here by my computer. So say it's 74 then there's a correlation that we need to convert and change this temperature to so it matches this, okay? Or what we can do is the voltage out is 2.5. We can say that this temperature is 74. So we can plot temperature versus voltage and fit a line to that, and that's how you calibrate it. And that's what I'm going to show you next. All right, here is a quick experiment to calibrate your temperature sensor right in the kitchen. So over here on the left is the Arduino that I showed you in the circuit. I have the temperature sensor running into a piece of styrofoam that I've kind of cut two holes with. All right, so I'll show you. So one hole the temperature sensor wires go through and the other one is a thermometer. And on this end, I put this in a bag. Make sure you put it in a bag because I'm gonna be using water. Uh, if you don't, the, uh, the it'll measure the wrong temperature. 
because the water is touching both of those and it's messing it up. So just put it in a bag. Here's the thermometer. Make sure you got some ice in here. So I put ice in the water, just a pot. And uh, make sure that these are down no, uh, long enough so they're in the middle of the of the pot, okay? And I got it down to about 33 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and get it up and raise it up to almost boiling. I probably won't get it to boiling. And I'm going to record the voltages that the Arduino is spitting out. And I'm going to write down what the temperature is on this thermometer. And then I'll have a correlation between voltage and temperature. Then I can plot that and I can fit that to an equation and predict, have a mathematical equation that'll predict the temperature as a function of voltage. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to turn this on. Right now the voltage is about 1.36 and it's about 30, 33 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to stir it just with a, a small spoon to kind of keep it uniform inside. And I'm gonna write down what the temperatures and the voltages are. I would do it for every five degrees. So you could actually have your paper, you could just write down, okay, you're gonna start at this temperature, but then every time it hits like 45, 50, 55, 60. And once I have all the data, I will show you in Excel. We'll look at the data and we'll plot it. We'll create a fit, which is gonna, then we can find that equation that correlates and calibrates our temperature sensor with volts. So I'm just stirring and recording the uh, voltages every five degrees. So right now I'm currently hitting, gonna be hitting 130 here in a second. So I'm just kind of stirring in here, making sure it's kind of well mixed. It's kind of stirring around. And I used medium heat. I didn't put it full blast. Do medium heat, that's fine. So 130 is four volts. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm not gonna go all the way up. I'll probably do maybe to 150. That'll be plenty. So when you're calibrating this, <clears throat> what you need to first do is you need to realize what ranges are you gonna need to calibrate, for example, I'm just looking here between freezing and maybe boiling. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 212. Other instances, you may need it to go above 212 and it might be a completely different fluid or liquid and maybe those temperatures are higher. So you wanna make sure you calibrate within your temperature or whatever sensor you're using to measure whatever. And uh, let's see, hold on one second. Let me hit 135, 4.08. And usually what you do, the correct method is to calibrate up and then go back down. But you don't need to go back down every five, maybe every 10 or 15 and check to make sure you get the same numbers. And I'll do that. I'll let it cool and check some random temperatures on my way down to make sure they're very similar to what I have. But yeah, a very simple way to calibrate just in your kitchen. Sensor. Let's look at the post process of this. <clears throat> okay, so I took my handwritten notes and I put them into Excel. So we have the voltage across the fixed resistor, and this is the thermometer temperature, okay? So now we have a voltage for all these temperatures all the way to 180. Okay, so we can now plot this, these. So this 
thermometer temperature is going to be on the Y, and the voltage across the fixed resistor is going to be on the X. So if I zoom out here, that's what I did right here. I have voltage, which is the dotted blue, as a function of thermometer temperature. Then I fitted the data to an exponential value. So I get like 24 e to the 0.4305 times x. So technically, if you want to make this correct, this would be t equals that times vf. Okay? So we have now created, let me just close this, a calibration to our thermistor based on our voltage across the fixed resistor. So I just did an exponential fit, and then down here is a fourth order fit, just to show you that you could possibly do that too. Now, <clears throat> so what I did over here is, let me just move this one. Here is the conversion to the resistance of the, across the temperature sensor or the resistance of the temperature sensor based on this voltage. I used <coughs> equation 8.12 to calculate the temperature, converted that to Celsius, then Fahrenheit, and then these last two are the fit equations on these two graphs. So this is the exponential and this is the fourth order. All right. And uh, I did this, so I'm comparing the equation from the book to our two fit. And uh, they're pretty close, but as you get higher up, they do become further off from each other. Okay. So there is a, 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 a video describing one of my favorite labs that I do with students. We talk about temperature sensors. We go through the data, we hook it up to a circuit, we analyze the, the circuit, we program, we post-process. And it teaches them about sensors, information that they learn throughout their career in their undergrad, which prepares them for the workforce, especially when you're dealing with sensors because calibrations are very, very important. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was probably one of my longer videos, but it's a very, very powerful method. Thank you very much and have a great day.